This week on Sport Fishing, we're gonna be fishing on my boat, the Misueño, same boat I use for private charters. And today I have a bunch of volunteers with me from the Youth Foundation, well, three. We have Jose, <laughs> Jose Jr., his son, and Tony. These guys volunteer all the time for my Youth Foundation, so we're gonna treat them for a day of fishing. Also on board is our deckhand, Roger, who's also gonna to fish today, because it's not a charter. What we're gonna first do is stop over at the bait receiver, get some live bait, then head out to Horseshoe and look for some yellowtail and calico bass. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. All right. <laughs> I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Oh! Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. very many places around the country we can pull up and buy live bait. Uh, you can do this in San Francisco. There's one place in downtown San Francisco there by Fisherman's Wharf that has live bait. Normally they have anchovies there. Here in Southern California we're blessed that we have a couple of different places to get bait. You can even go to Catalina Island and there's a bait boat there with a squid around and you can buy uh, live squid from them. But here in Southern California, here in the Long Beach area, there's two. There's one here on the east end of the breakwater, and there's another one over by San Pedro. In the old days, we used to have to catch all our own baits down there. But here, it isn't a problem. Here we just pull up and get it. This is what we have for bait today. Really nice, big sardines. It'll work out good. Got our first bite of the morning. And this is Jose Jr. He's on a fish. Let's see what he's got. Hopefully it's a yellowtail. Might be a barracuda. You never know. Make sure you move your line back and forth. You do the normal thing. Just raise the rod up and lower it down. Lower the rod down nice and easy, just like that. Let's see what you got here. I don't think it's a yellow. It's not wrong. Oh, maybe a yellow. Yeah, it's shaking his head now like a yellow. Oh, okay. Leave it, up. it back here. There we go. Short barracuda. Okay, bring it to the boat. Give me some slack, buddy. Give me some slack. So here's the fish Jose just caught. It's a short barracuda. We don't want to hurt this one. We got to let it go. And see, he's got a circle hook on there. That's why we didn't lose it. Because all those sharp teeth. See all those sharp teeth right there. Here we go. A little short barracuda. Nice fish. Only a couple inches short. Nice job, Jose. Okay, we're going to release this fish and take a little break from the action here and go to the tackle box and show you the gear we're using for today's trip. This week in the Tackle Box, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today. We're fishing aboard my boat, the Misueño, that I use for my private charters. And fishing with me today are some of the volunteers from my Youth Foundation. So I want to treat these guys because they donate a lot of their time to help me put on my kids' events with the Daniel Hernandez Youth Foundation. So they're out fishing with me today. And we have a good time to be out on the water because the yellowtail have been biting. 
Now, as far as tackle for this type of fishing, dinghy is pretty light line. These aren't monster yellowtail, so 20 pound test would be the minimum I would go, but you can easily go 20, 25, or 30 pound test line will work out fine. What I have on this particular reel that the guys are using today is they have 50 pound spectra below it with 25 pound mono on top and then the short leader we're putting on top of it is 25 pound fluorocarbon. When you're fishing right up on the surface using live bait, no sinkers, the fluorocarbon can make a big difference. So it's really important that you put that on there. As far as hooks, really it's basic hooks, just either using a J hook or a circle hook. The guys that are fishing a lot, have a lot of experience are using the J hooks. The newer anglers are guys that aren't sure when to set the hook on a fish. We have um, circle hooks on their lines, and that way when the fish runs, all they do is put the reel in gear, point it at the fish, wind on the reel, and the fish will hook itself. And this is the basic gear that you need. You want to have some good strong hooks, nothing lighter than 3X wire, that way the hook doesn't open up on you, just in case you hook a bigger yellowtail. Lots of times you're fishing these smaller yellowtail, 10, 12 pound fish, and you might hook a 30 pounder, so you gotta be ready for that. And then with 25 pound test or 30 pound mono, you won't have a problem landing a fish that size. This is the basic gear you need for this type of fishing. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. All right, so we got one going on the iron. It came up boiling through the iron. Got one hooked up. Oh, the other boats are hooking up. There you go. Got him my color. Okay. On the jig. Nice and great. Uh oh, we got a double. I got a double. And the jig comes out. There we go. We only need six more. Color. Here we go, Tony. Bring them up one time. There we go. All right, nice job, Tony. Woo! See, there's some perks for volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> Other than uh, endless supply of Diet Coke. Yeah. So you having fun? Awesome. You having a good time? Great time, Dan. Thanks. All right, cool. How do you like fishing a small boat like this? Uh, I'll take this any day of the week. Thank Instead you of all much. those other big boats? Yep, no cross people. lines. All right, well, this is Tony's fish. Nice yellowtail. And then Roger just got this one on the jig. That was a nice fish, too. Another one going. Looks like a nicer grade. Does it feel like a good one? It's all right. They ran deep. You know, when you got color, I'll get the, gap, the net out.
don't bounce it out of the water. There you go. All right, put your free spool. All right, here's Roger, my deckhand, and he caught a fish today. Nice yellow, a little bit nicer grade. We just made a move. We were inside close to the horseshoe. Now we're out farther, almost all the way out to the sculpting grounds. And uh, first fish at this spot, a little bit better grade than the fish we found inside. Hopefully we're gonna find some bigger ones. Nice fish. Come on, Jose. Come on, Jose. Oh, come on. <laughs> Time, Jose. Keep them away from the boat. Keep, lean forward. Here. Get the tail. Yeah. Get in the corner. Hurry up. Come on. Come on. Don't lift his head out of the water. There you go. Woo. All right, Jose. Okay. Okay. Step back. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Keep them away from the boat. Keep them away from the boat. There you go. One more time. Wind down. Okay, step back. Step back. Straight. Right behind me. Step right behind me. There we go. All right, Jose. All right. Thank you. Here's another yellowtail. This is what we're doing today. Is we're just out here around the horseshoe kelp area. They're not monster yellowtail, but nice size yellowtail. We're using circle hooks today because I had a private charter yesterday. We're here, there was a lot of big barracuda. So we didn't want to take a chance of losing some nice barracuda. So we went with the circle hook. This is a ringer circle hook. And it doesn't matter for the uh, yellow tail, if you use a circle hook or not. But if this had been a nice barracuda, we wouldn't have to worry about losing the fish. Nice, beautiful fish. Right, nice job. You. Thank you. Good Appreciate job. That. All right, take that one home. All right. All right, we're going to take a little break from the action here. We're at the Michoinio and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious fish we're catching today. This week in the galley, we're back in San Diego with Domingo, and he's now with a new company called Fitrition, and he's going to do a dish for us. And what do you have in store for us, Domingo? Today we have the heirloom tomato with the ceviche. We're going to get started off with some avocados. Throw the avocado in there, what do we do next? We're gonna throw a little bit of tomatoes. Orange. A little, a little orange. How hot do you like it? It's never hot enough. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> We're gonna throw a little bit of mangoes inside too as well. We're gonna throw all of our cucumbers. Let's break up some cilantro. Okay. Let's get mixy. Okay. Now we're gonna add the shrimp. Pinch of salt, tajin, squeeze the lime. Just keep that mixing. This is more of a fresh salad for a nice hot summer day. Looks good. So you're gonna to wanna to cut the top of the heirloom tomato, cut around with a paring knife, use a melon baller to scoop out the inside, and that will give you a bowl inside an heirloom tomato. And this is what we're gonna to use to hold our ceviche. Cool. Just wanna 
Get a nice good mix. Get a lot of juices from the inside. It's a very beautiful, colorful dish. So try to get all the colors inside the bowl. It's okay if it kind of comes over a little bit. Place it on the dish. Little microgreens. Some radish rings. nice and colorful. Yeah, it's beautiful for the summer day. As soon as you get off a boat, it's a great thing to enjoy. Well, Domingo, this looks great. I'm going to try it. And normally I would just dip in it with a fork, but since we have a chip and it is a ceviche dish. That is really good. Thank you, Dan Hernandez. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Domingo. Thanks, Dan. That's really good. For more information about Domingo, what he's up to now, you can go to his website, and it's fittrition.com? Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, man. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. There's another nice yellow tail. I got one, too. Oh, you got one, too, so. We got double going. I'm going to work on mine. Stay right there. All right, Tony. Woo, on the board. That's a triple for yeah. us. Okay, here's mine. So we got a triple there. First Jose was on, Tony was on at the same time, and then while Tony was fighting his fish, I got bit. And see what I'm using, a level wine reel, small reel, nice light graphite rod. I have 65 pound spectra, but 25 pound fluorocarbon on top with a circle hook. It's coming in on us. This is fun fishing. You know, when you look at all the other sport boats here with 60 to 90 people on them, it's nice to be out here with just three or four of us fishing. Nice little yellow tail. Straight up. Okay. Keep the fish away from the boat. There's color. There he is right here. I'm gonna bring him out one more time. There he comes. There we go. Put the rod in free spool. There's another yellow tail. We caught these three fish so fast that we haven't had a chance to put them in our kill bag yet. But uh, this is fun fishing. If you don't know how to use your small boat, um, watch some of my videos on my YouTube channel, that'll help you. But a lot of people hire me for private charters to show them how to find the fish, anchor their boat, and what to do on the boat. Or if you just want to come out and have some fun with your family and stuff, you know, I'm available for that too. But Today, I just want to show you guys how easy it is to come out locally and just fish the same techniques that we do in all the party boats and catch fish, nice quality fish. Here's a nice yellowtail. They're not monster fish, but they're nice quality fish. They're going to taste delicious. Oh, we got another one going right now. Fourth one in a row. Take your time. Might be a Dorado. <laughs> See what's going to jump. There it is. Right on the surface. Good. Yes. You're getting close to your limit. Was this your fourth no, one? Uh, third or fourth one? Yeah, fourth one, I think. You got one more to catch. And then we have to sit you down below and you can't fish anymore. 
<laughs> There's a yellow tail, really nice. Nice job, man. Congratulations. Right, and all we're doing is just fly line fishing live sardines. And uh, fish are coming up, they're hitting them, they're boiling all around the boat. It's really nice, easy fishing. It's a little different than most small boat fishing where you depend on your meter a lot to see the fish. We're just in a hard bottom that we know that there's fish swimming around because we're seeing everybody hook fish. And we meter some fish when we first got here, but most of the time on the meter, there's no fish at all. So you just have to trust that you're in the right zone and that you see fish and that they're swimming around this big area here. They're eating the different baits that all the different sport boats are chumming up. And if you do that, you can catch fish like this. Nice yellow tail. All right, we take a little break from the action. When we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. For this week's tip of the week, I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, going out small boat fishing like we did today on my boat. You don't always have to make that long run to go look for cow patties offshore or even run to Catalina Island. Pay attention to what's biting locally. Maybe you get on a bite like today. You know, we weren't very far off the beach fishing around the horseshoe kelp and a little bit farther out, but we didn't go anywhere close to going all the way up to Catalina Island or farther than that. We were pretty close to shore, inshore fishing. And we did good. We ended up with 12 yellowtail and some barracuda and some other fish too. So that's this week's tip. Don't always think you have to go far offshore. You can fish in closer, fish on a small boat like this with your friends, or you know, find a guide to take you out. Well, I want to thank the guys for fishing with me today. Thanks, Jose. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Little Jose. We had a lot of fun fishing together. I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing. And I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best and sport fishing.